Joining us now is CNN political analyst and New York Times White House correspondent Maggie Haberman. She broke the news of Hope Hicks's resignation. Maggie, great to have you here on set with us. Let's just start there. Give us a reality check in terms of what we just heard Anthony Scaramucci say. Is morale at an all-time low in the White House? Yes, reality check is yes. That is... Uh, there, it, it is really, really bad there. In some ways, if you talk to staffers, they will say there are things that John Kelly made better, but in a lot of other ways, things were uh, vastly unimproved. Um, the, the factionalization in areas of the White House got better. The mood did not improve. They are not very well staffed. They still can't hire a lot of people. Um, Kelly um, forgets what he says uh, to one person and says something entirely different to somebody else. We saw that a lot around the Rob Porter issue. Um, he does not entirely empower people. He very much guards sort of the, the, the area around the Oval Office and views a lot of people who have their own relationships with the president um, as, a, as an, uh, an, an, imperil, an imperiling factor in his command and control structure, which he favors. So is there, as Anthony Scaramucci mm -hmm. just said, a culture of fear and intimidation because of General Kelly? I mean, I don't know that I would use the word intimidation um, because I'm not really sure what that's referring to. Um, there is certainly a culture of fear about getting in trouble, getting on someone's bad side. I just think right now you had this moment for basically two months after last year where the White House sort of was united for the most part, people against Steve Bannon, and they were able to tell themselves that was the problem. Prior to that, they were able to say, Reince Priebus, he's the problem. In fact, you know, the problem is the person who sets the tone, and that is the president. And so I heard again last night from uh, some advisors who said, who have departed the White House, who said they think that without, um, without sort of people who can whisper in the president's ear very effectively that maybe they'll all be rowing in the same direction in a, in a new way, that's just never what happens. Um, Hope Hicks. Did she jump or was she pushed? She jumped. I, I'm sorry, she jumped. I know that that is not a popular no need to thing to say. Well, I'm only apologizing because it, it is, Twitter seems very upset with that. But um, look, she, uh, we go over all of the things that she's enmeshed in, right, in the last several weeks. Um, because of her proximity to the president, she knows all kinds of things about certain meetings. She has attracted attention from congressional investigators and the special counsel, Robert Mueller. Um, they want to know what she knew about the firing of James Comey. They want to know what she knew about drafting a statement aboard Air Force One in response to our story at the Times about Donald Trump Jr.'s meeting with Russian lawyers promising, um, quote unquote, dirt on Hillary Clinton. Um, she is constantly having to manage his moods. She is constantly having to protect other staffers from his moods. And then her personal life became a spectacle um, because she was dating Rob Porter, the staff secretary, who resi did resign under pressure um, over allegations of spousal abuse. When you add all of that up and you think about that fact set, why would somebody want to stay in that job? Well, except that there are 365 days a year. And so if she had always intended to leave in 2018, why yesterday? Oh, I don't know that she always intended to leave in 2018, but I know that she had been talking about leaving for a very long time. Uh, and she had been planning it ahead of Tuesday's but I mean, hearing. Yesterday was just coincidental, or yesterday there was a final was, straw? Yesterday was coincidental. I mean, the fact that it was yesterday, let me, let me rephrase that. Yesterday had nothing to do with the hearing the day before, if that is what you are asking. Correlation now, is not causation. Correct. It so comes at you, that counsel. time. That was, look, that was a tough day for her. Yeah, she had to meet with counsel for about 20 That's minutes right. after she gave the white lies thing. That's right. And people have to understand, it's one thing when you're talking to us, as scrutinizing as you can be. Um, but when, are, when I'm holding the power to punish you, yeah. in a way, for what right. you say, um, you those are hard moments. Those, those are hard moments for someone who's sure. new to this. That's right. This is, you know, Hope Hicks uh, had a very elevated position with Trump, and her loyalty to him uh, helped garner that. But mm -hmm. this is not a battle-tested person who knows how to weather storms. Very few people know how to weather this kind of storm. If you think about how many White Houses we have see go, seen go through this kind of thing, the only, again, of the spectacle nature of it with the, with the legal underlay, the Clinton White House is the only one that I can think of with respect to something this big that had proximity to the president. Um, I don't think that that was an easy day for her based on everything that I have heard, um, but that does not mean that that was the reason that it happened yesterday. Again, I, I, I realize I'm saying you're going to have to trust me on it, but, but it really is not why it happened. Um, she, only she can know if there was some final straw, but the final straw was not that hearing. Okay, next uh, reality check of Anthony Scaramucci. Is Washington a gold-plated hot tub? <laughs> well, I don't know that it's gold-plated or a hot tub. Um, <laughs> I guess what I'm referring to is Jared um, Kushner. And so, Jared Kushner... I don't know if he has a gold-plated hot tub either. I think he does. Okay. Because he did get a huge 
loan right. from a private equity two. firm, two huge loans from right. a private equity firm that had had several meetings in the White House mm -hmm. after the president was already in the Oval Office. Right. Um, you know, look, that, who we are told wanted a job. Uh, this seems like a quid pro quo of some kind. And so what, do you, what are you hearing about Jared Kushner's future? Well, just to answer the question about the loans first, what people who um, like Jared Kushner say is these are some of the major firms in the country. Of course, they were coming in for meetings. Um, you know, he, these are not personal loans. This involved his company that he's technically not at anymore. Um, however, to your point about the, the quid pro quo appearance, we have no way of knowing what took place in those conversations. But this is why um, elected officials are always cautioned to right. avoid even the appearance of impropriety. Yeah, appearance. And in previous White Houses, you have had people make more of an effort to, to try to be careful to not look as if they are in the middle of something. And this is why, um, generally speaking, it is best practice not to bring your, your family into positions like this, especially when there are all of these business entanglements. In terms of his future, my understanding is that Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump are sending out pretty strong signals that they do not plan on going anywhere. Um, the tension between them and Kelly is very, very real. Um, you know, I, the president is always going to side with family. The president does not want to deal with this security clearance issue. He punted on it very clearly to John Kelly. Jared Kushner's uh, security reportedly was downgraded. Um, the question remains what that means. Can he sort of hang on and still be uh, effective in his job? Will he have to leave the way other far more junior aides had to leave because they right. could not get top secret Well, that's clearance. part of the Ides of March theory that's starting to bubble up, right. is that you can't have Kushner and Kelly that's right. in the same house if Kelly really believes that there are legitimate questions about Kushner's conflicts right. and whether or not he's compromised. Because I have to tell you, Anthony is part right. It's tough uh, to be someone who's in private capital and then come into public service. <laughs> Divesting isn't simple. Uh, but it has been done before. You don't right. take meetings like that. You don't do it. No, you Anthony avoid, you wouldn't avoid have done it, it even if there even if there wasn't an issue. That's right. right. You just avoid it because we are now having this conversation. Right. It was even well, more egregious, you could argue, than what Trump Jr. did with the meeting in Trump Tower with the Russian lawyer. Because he wasn't working for the government. He was in a campaign. He's trying to get dirt just like everybody in campaigns are. This guy's working for the government. He's installed in the White House and he's taken a meeting right. like this. If John Kelly allows that to survive, right. you know, that is a corrosive dynamic for someone like Kelly, who's all about the order of the system. I think that's right. And I think that Kelly has already had to make a ton of concessions to your point on sort of comparing the Don Jr. meeting to the Jared Kushner issue. It is correct that Don Jr. Um, had never done this before, did not sort of know, I, I think, what the rules were. Um, Kushner has had the ethics mm -hmm. rules gone over with him repeatedly now. He has been there for 13 months. He has been there as long as his father-in-law has been there. Um, you do need to be careful in terms of what Kelly is willing to tolerate. When Kelly took that job, remember, he said he would only do it if he had complete control of the staff. And that included Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. President Trump assured him that he did. But as we know, President Trump does not like giving anyone that much control. And so the question, I think, is not just whether John Kelly can endure it, but what the president is going to try to force on him. And does Kelly decide? Kelly clearly believes that he needs to be there for the sake of protecting the Constitution. He has said that to people. Mm -hmm. Does he decide that is worth the trade-off?